Galatians chapter 6, and then we'll read verse 3. So notice right here that the Word of God talks about a person who is being lifted up. So when you feel like that you're lifted up, that's being prideful. So there are two things that you should keep in mind that will help you to maintain humility at the book of Galatians. Chapter 6, verse 3, for if a man think himself to be something. So then let's say that you're a person who think that, oh, I'm a, I'm a really good lawyer, I'm a really good DA, you know, like my brother would do it. So then if you talk like that, if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, but in reality you're actually a nothing, you're not really good at it. He deceiveth himself, so then you're tricking, you're fooling yourself. So the idea is this, of course people online, I'm joking, all right, he's just my we're brother, so <laughs> we're not live. <laughs> yeah, but this is being recorded on archive, but anyway, so the idea is this, is that there are people who think that they are really good because of their spiritual accomplishments. That's very, a problematic issue. A lot of people look at their spiritual accomplishments and then because of that, that's why they think themselves to be something. But then God says, no, in reality, you're actually nothing. The, one of the biggest examples is onliners. You see someone starting a channel, and then they think that they're all that. And that is wickedness. That is pride. That is evil. A man thinks himself to be something. Oh, yeah, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at that. No, you're nothing. And you fool yourself. So... What's important to understand is that you need to do two things here. The two things that you've got to do is doing verse 4 as well as verse 2. Those are the two keys. But let's keep reading and then I'll explain more. But let every man prove his own work. So God's telling you, you've got to prove your own work and your effort. The work will show you that you're really good in the spiritual comp in your accomplishments. Not your thinking. See, when a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing. This one's got to be cast off. The ones that got to put you up is not your prideful thinking. The one who should be lifting you up is God using your work. When God uses your work, your work will speak out for you. That's the idea. So then, I'm the type that might say something like, oh, I'm a great preacher, I'm a great teacher, and stuff like that. Then what's that? That's, that is prideful thinking. And I always have to be careful with that, especially if God elevates me higher and higher in this church and online and among other preachers. Uh, I have to be careful with that. Uh, sometimes people will say that I'm a really great preacher, teacher, even in a big conference, and that is an incredible blessing to me. That encourages me. But... If I think like, oh yeah, I'm really good, then you got to watch out for that. Let the work speak out for you. Let the person say that you're a good preacher and teacher. Let your work show it. Uh, my subscribers online, hopefully that could show it. Um, let my credentials where I worked so hard, let that speak for itself. Let the people in the church, fellow preachers, say that about you. Not you. Not you. Let's keep reading. Let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. So then he's going to rejoice in his own work, and not in what? Another. Now that's important to understand. People who have a tendency to think that they're a good preacher, and these are the people that really, really tick me off. And only a few of you would probably see me rambling against certain preachers who like to copycat Bible believers and then they act like that it's their own unique thing. That really ticks me off. And then you'll probably hear me rambling about that whenever I fellowship with some of you people. But then I'm not going to mention these people's names, but then some of these preachers, what they would do is that they think, oh, you know, I'm all that. I'm a great preacher. You know, I taught so-and-so how to preach this and how to teach that. It went when we don't even know your name, we don't even know you from Adam. But anyway, these kind of prideful preachers, they will boast about themselves. But the thing is, is that let them boast in their own work, not in another. Now, let me give some examples right here. So then, one of the primary examples, which the Lord definitely used in my life, and I give credit to him, credit is due, is Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. And what I don't like about these Bible believers, 
or the so-called Bible believers is that I guarantee you this, channels that really sound like our kind of work, Bible believing materials, you got to realize this, majority of their books, I bet you, their number one author that consists most books is this man right here. And what I don't like about it is that preachers today and onliners take works from this man and they act like it's their own teaching. And then they'll act like it's their own teaching and people will think, oh, what a great preacher you are. What a great teacher you are. But you've heard me talk about this several times that a lot of things that I teach and preach is not on my own. It was from Bible-believing preachers before me. So I would let them get the credit on that one. But I don't like it when, there are, when there's this prideful, arrogant punk, shall I call him? So these prideful, arrogant punks, they steal these people's works, put them upon themselves, and then act like, oh yeah, I accomplish all this teaching. And what's even worse than that, which really ticks me off more than anything, is that they'll steal the works from this person and then they'll critique this person. Now, what in the world, man? You just learned from this guy. You would have been, you would have been nothing. You would have been a nobody if you didn't learn anything from this guy. And then you act like you're smart off know it all and then you critique this man. You act like, oh, he was crooky, he was wacky, you know, about the stuff concerning like the mark of the beast and dispensational salvations and Dr. Ruckman was a kook and, well, you little punk, you. And you're just rotting 60 years old and you're white in the skin and some people in my church think you're a pedophile by just looking at you, you know, like this, you know, while you're critiquing people. People like you ought to repent and get right with God. What kind of a person are you? You know why? Because you're so bored 60 years of age that you have to keep learning from people like us so that you can critique people, so that you can critique us. That's your life. You little loser, you. You bunch of losers. And this include pastors too, man. I don't like it, these pastors. They make like thick books, you know, like on dispensationalism, pretending like they're a really great teacher. And then they backstab these people. I'm, you guys tick me off more than some of my enemies online. This is the kind of people that ticks your pastor off the most. The one that ticked me off, like I told you many times, are people who damage people's soul, right? Yeah. But then if you're a sneak on top of that, you're yeah. worse. Amen. You're worse. I really disdain those people, man. I really disdain them. Especially when you cloak it off like a victim. Oh, you know, why, why are you critiquing people like me? You know, you're saying that we should uh, follow along whatever... Uh, these Bible-believing preachers say, and I can't independently speak for myself, and you guys are a cult, and you guys are victimizing people like me. Why, you little punk, you? Then if you think that we're some strange little cult, then why did you have to learn from people like us? That's right. Man, you think that you know it all, man. You think that you know it all. All right, so let's just continue reading here. So then... Uh, let your work speak out for you. Don't borrow from somebody and think you're a big shock and then you, you're, you're great enough that you can correct people, other Bible-believing preachers out there, man. Those are the people I cannot stand. Verse 5, for every man shall bear his own burden. Okay, that's very important. You have to bear your own burden. See, what lifts you up in spiritual accomplishment is God using your work. And how that is done is two key things. One key... As mentioned before, it's your own work. Your own work. And let your own work put you up. So God uses your, see that? Your own work. And that lifts you up. Not borrowing from these people and then critiquing them like you know it all. Now don't get me wrong. Uh, I thank God for Bible-believing leaders before us. We got Ruckman, Schofield, Larkin, and then we had Jack Chick, and then I learned a lot from R Ripplinger stuff and Edward F. Hill's stuff for my uh, arguments. But you got to understand this, is that all these people, we thank God for them, that they helped us and they helped us grow to teach and preach. But we don't take credit for these people's works. We give them credit what they're doing, and then we don't act like we're smart know-it-alls that we can say, oh, but we critique them on this and this and this. Yeah. Then why do you even have to learn from these people to begin with, you little punk you? And I don't care if you're 60 years old, you're, you're a bigger punk then. Yeah. So then, let your own work prove it. So let your own work speak out for you. If these people helped you up, praise the Lord, then that's not your work. Yeah. It's those people who laid it down. 
The other part that's your own work, let it lift you up. If there's anything that was my own work that the Lord lifted me up, then praise the Lord Jesus Christ for that. And I'm going to always remember where I came from as well to make sure to, that the right credit goes to the right people. And if any credit goes to me, then let my work speak it out for me as mentioned before. Let God use my work to put me up and give me the credit. So that's the first thing. The second thing, which is very important, you bear your own burden. Now, what's very important to understand from chapter 6, which a lot of people don't tend to do, is that you don't bear your own burden, and then verse 2, which we read before, bear another's burden, others. You know what we do? We violate this because we don't want any other people's burdens on ourselves because we feel like we have enough of our own burden. But when we have our burden, we have other people carry it for us. That is 90% of Christians in churches. See, we expect the pastor, the brethren, the church to meet our kind of burden and help us. But then when we seek their help and their burden, they're like, no, I got too much in my own hands. I'm busy. I can't come to church. Or I got work. I got school. I got a family to take care of. Blah, 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 blah. See? This is twisted. A church does not function when you violate these two rules. A church functions when you apply these two rules. And then this one is important where you don't take any credit for the burdens that you bore for other people or your own burden. I appreciate a lot of you telling me if there's something that you can pray for me about. And uh, I mean, there's so much that I want to say to you, but I know that I can't say it. Why? Because it, I know that it's going to cause more damage than good, so I have to bear my own burden. So a lot of time a pastor has to take a lot of private burden for himself, and he can't tell other people. So it is important to understand that you bear your own burden. It is very difficult. I know how much you want to let it all out, but you got to understand this. Sometimes you got to realize that the Lord gave you that burden to see how much you will bear it. So don't get me wrong. You should not, it is very unhealthy that you keep it all to yourself and then you break down. You got to realize that's what a pastor in a church and prayer is for. You should, everyone carry each other's burdens. But you don't want to be dependent on this, see? You don't want to be dependent upon people carrying your burden. You got to bear your own burden. This has to be first. If we don't see this first, then, uh, I'm got, then you got a problem. you got to be doing this first before you ask somebody to bear the burden for you. This is a sign of a mature Christian, is that you bear your own burden, and at the same time, you're bearing other people's burdens. That's the sign of true Christian spiritual maturity, and if you want this church to become the greatest church in the world, it has to function like that. Nowadays, we, we live in a day and age of a church of carnal, fleshy people crying about taking care of me, 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 and then we don't want to take care of other people. That's right. Okay, so let's return to our main text right here. Verse 6, let him that is taught in the word. Okay, if you're taught in the Bible, then what should you be taught in? Communicate unto him. So communicate, what that word means right there, is actually to transmit, to talk to another person. But in this case with scripture, it's going to be money right here. Money. Now I know how much this is a cuss word, and you're sick and tired of seeing pre-tele-evangelists ripping money off of people. That doesn't, I get sick and tired of that too. But you got to realize this, you can't let the devil's preacher prevent you from giving to the Lord. Right. So communicate is another word where you give money. Give money to who? Notice right here, this is very important. Communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. So you have to give money to people who teach the word. Now, this is something important to understand. I appreciate onliners who give to this ministry. I really thank God for that. I don't ask a dime from you guys, as you might know. Because we got too many emails requesting how to give money, I just got tired of it and just set up a PayPal after that. 
So that's good. That's a good thing. That means that there are people who have this in their heart. They want to give money to the teachers, the people who teach. So it is important to understand, I don't think I have this kind of problem with my onliners, but if you do have a problem with this, then you got to think about this. YouTube is a tendency where you get everything for free and you don't even pay for it. Now, uh, I thank God for uh, our members who have a desire to watch Bible-believing teachers and preachers online and then get their materials. And I especially thank God for the Bible Baptist Bookstore putting some things that we can get, listen and hear for free. But you got to realize this. The Bible Baptist Bookstore, those preachers and teachers online, you shouldn't be dependent on them for freebies. All right, that will teach right there, okay? You got to realize this. When you get this kind of stuff from them, you should give to them. Teaching is, if you think teaching is easy, you should get up on the pulpit and try it sometime, teaching and preaching. They should be paid for this effort. Me, I'm not talking about myself. The people give it to me anyway. I don't have a complaint in the world. My people in the church give to me. But I want to tell you people this is that if you have that kind of problem with other teachers and preachers and what you watch online, you better think about this. All right? You shouldn't just get a free handout.